hey y'all welcome back to the garage today we got a little side work going we got a 22 inch toro push mower uh, it is a self-propelled model and everything uh, customer complaint is no start uh, did pull the air cleaner out and she a little uh, brake clean in there starting flood and gave it a couple pulls fired right up so you can guess it it's probably the bottom adjuster or bottom uh, needle so Either way, we're going to tear it apart and uh, get her clean and get her running for them. So hang out and we'll get the wrenching. All right, y'all. There we go. We got the carburetor here. Uh, I was going to do a quick and dirty and just pull the bottom bowl out and run a torch tip cleaner up through the main jet and check the needle and seat float there to make sure it was uh, cleaned out but I decided to go ahead and pull it all the way off it ain't that much more work and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and do that and uh, we'll get her cleaned out so these these nuts here take a 10 millimeter This should just pop right off of here. Yep. Just like that. Hold it back out of the way. On this linkage here, you can just turn it turn it sideways. Give it a little bit of a lift. And it pops right up out of there. So and then you just gotta disconnect your little spring there. That's disconnected. Oh, we gotta get the gotta get that disconnected. Um, either disconnect that, or uh, you can pull these studs out and rotate the carburetor. But uh, I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and see if I just can't tweak that just enough to get her to pop up out of there so give me a second and uh we'll bring you back all right y'all back uh first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to pitch off the fuel line and make sure that that uh doesn't leak and we're going to take this clamp off of here give that a little pull now you know I bought a set of pair of I got a set of pair of pliers to pull this off, but alright. That fuel smells a little old, but it still should be good enough to run on. So alright. I'm just gonna grab this, maybe. Tighten my pliers down here a little bit. She's not wanting to come off her, so. All right, plan B. We're going to uh, take these studs out. I'm going to grab the stuff I need to do it, and we'll bring you right back. All right, y'all. I'm going to pull these out of here. Time's money. We ain't got time to monkey around. Run those in there. Take my 10-millimeter wrench. Put it on there. Tighten it up. And then hopefully I can just yep, break it loose. Pull that stud out of there. Right, get these nuts back. the nut on the floor and let it roll to the other side of the shop bring you right back all right y'all got that nut back <coughs> same thing on this one 
Move the wrench on the back one. You can do this with a ratchet or a couple of screw or a couple of wrenches or I see that one broke loose. Now we got her off there. Protect There's a isolator here and a gasket. Just remember what sequence they go in. Pull that out. We can turn that up. Turn that up. There we go. Get the carburetor off there. So uh, let me back the camera up. We'll pull this bowl and uh, show you what we got inside. Alright y'all, moment of truth here, let's see what we got inside here, There's a little bit of, a couple drops of fuel, so float's not stuck, we got white chalky, E fuels, gotta love them, and we got all kinds of carnage down in there so all right let me grab my torch tip cleaners and uh we'll get this thing cleaned up so hang on all right y'all uh some of you may have already seen this it's a these are pipe cleaners or torch tip cleaners got a bunch of little they're basically files in here uh, of course this is the one i always use the most part and uh, just take that up in there kind of run it up in let's see that one's uh, that one's good that one's good and clogged so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that orifice out of there and uh, see if we can't clean it you know outside the carburetor Sometimes you get lucky and you can get it up through there and get it good and clean, but uh, this ain't working. So let me grab a screwdriver and we'll uh, get that cleaned out. All right, y'all. Got me a screwdriver here. Fits down in that slot of that orifice just real nice. You want something that fits down inside that, inside that slot, kind of snug. You don't want to. You don't want to tear that up. All right. Oh, we got the uh, emulsion tube and the orifice out all in one. So, all right. See, this is what I'm talking about. This little silver thing here, or brass thing. See if we can't get this torch tip cleaner up through there. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got her cleaned out. Good. I'll shoot her down with some brake parts cleaner there. And if you guys are using regular carburetor cleaner, be leery of this rubber gasket on here and any other rubber parts. Carburetor cleaner will make that stuff swell and it will not fit back in there. So, all right, we ran, ran it up through the center there. Got it good and clean. Then there's some small holes on the sides. You wanna run them through there. varies on how many is on each carburetor some have a bunch some have a few you just gotta kind of look at it and get them all cleaned out so all right that's looking pretty good there Uh, this probably, probably would have been a good candidate for the ultrasonic cleaner, but honestly, I just don't feel like firing it up today just for this. Now, if it would have been old, nasty, varnished up fuel and everything, yeah, we would have, we would have got her out and fired her up and got her good and clean, but... 
I'm just looking through it there. Oh yeah, we can see light through it. I'm going to double check this. The inside of this actually looks pretty clean. Look down through the throat here and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, she looks good. So, alright. Let's put her back together. The, uh, the big end here kind of looks like that. That goes in last. So, get that down in there. Get our orifice started in there. Make sure the tip of your screwdriver, and of course, I dropped that orifice in upside down. There we go. Didn't have the emulsion tube in upside down, just the orifice. Okay, now we got it going the right direction. Alright. Get that back in there. When you put these back in, you don't have to you don't have to he-man them. Just run them into the seat. Just give them a little twist just to make them hold. So, alright. Now we got this. And alright. That looks good. If I remember correctly, the drain was facing forward. And put that in there. And I'm just going to give it a little love tap here at the wrench to make sure it's seated. Alright. Good and seated. I blew through the inlet there, fuel inlet. This way you should be able to blow through it. Turn it this way, it shouldn't. So, uh, there you have it. There's clean. I'm going to go ahead and get it reinstalled on the, on the uh, push motor here. And we'll bring you all back for a startup. Alright y'all. Got that linkage all hooked back up. Got the little spring hooked back up. Fuel line on. Got the studs back in and tight. So, let's uh, open that up. And we'll see if we got uh, see if we got some fuel. Make sure we ain't got no leaks. I'm gonna crack this drain open just a hair. See if uh, make sure we got fuel coming into the bowl. Yes, sir, we do. If you guys seen that drip down there or not, probably not. But yep, we got fuel coming down out of the fuel tank. It's not running out of the carburetor around the bull or anything, so I think we're good to go ahead and put the uh, air cleaner back on here. I got the gasket on there. Alright. Grab the nuts. Snug that one up there a little bit that one on there a little bit we're just going to give her a little toot toot and snug these up there we go all right carburetor's on there all good let me drop the uh, lift down to the ground and we'll bring you guys back for a test start Tweaking to do there. She's running pretty high. So 
let me look at this a little bit more and we'll bring y'all back all right y'all i figured it out as soon as i lifted it up and looked at it uh somebody's been in here messing around let me zoom you in here i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about some of you may have already just seen it so this spring here is twisted somebody's been in here messing around when I first looked at it it was up like that so what we're gonna do we're gonna pull that thing up out of there and get it routed the right way see it's if you can see it's pulled up through this bracket the wrong way so there we go yeah see there there shouldn't be a whole lot of tension on that thing until this you know until it is running you know it should be in there kind of floppy so all right i think i got that taken care of now i think somebody else has been in, somebody's also been in here in the gearbox because the drive isn't discon isn't uh isn't disengaging but i wasn't hired to wasn't hired to uh, fix that. All I was hired for was to get it running. Um, it could be dirt in the belt. Could be somebody's went in here and you know put a zip tie or something on it. Uh, you guys can't even see what I'm talking about. Right here in this area here, the belt runs up under here. Um, so uh, the cable does move, but you know, like I said, it's going continuously so uh i don't think i'm not gonna mess with that because like i said the guy just brought it to me and said it wouldn't run and not, nothing more than that so that's what i'm here to fix is the, the running problem so all right i'm gonna drive her back down see if these rpms are are a lot better to my liking so we'll back you up and we'll do her again all right y'all i got her figured out on the fiddle fairies we're messing with it they bent this bracket down on this spring so uh, I bent it up got tension on it got it started ran great real high rpm while it was running I adjusted that to get the rpm I wanted and we're good so and the last thing to do just put the uh, air cleaner back back on it and we can ship this turd so gotta love fiddle fairies as you know so all right that's it all right y'all i just want to give you a little update i did get it to where the uh drive wheels aren't going all the time uh, apparently something happened and grabbed this cable here which is the drive cable you can see it right here this thing was pulled like super tight so I just backed it off a little bit made it to where it doesn't have any tension on it when it's in the non running or non walking position I guess you call it and uh, yeah so there you got it. We got that fixed too. So, all right. All right, y'all. There you have it. Uh, if you got a Toro push mower, or actually any push mower that won't start, first thing to do, check for spark. You can use a spark tester, test it that way. You know, I just shot a little starting fluid or brake clean in the carburetor there, pulled it a couple times, it fired over, died out. I knew it had spark can assume that it was a fuel issue fuel delivery issue so showed you we took the carburetor apart got that all cleaned out uh she runs like a champ we got them drive wheels adjusted the cable on it and drive wheels they don't run you know all the time like they were and i even adjusted the uh, dead man cable uh this thing must have taken a hit or something or somebody's really fidgeting with it you guys noticed whenever you're shutting it off it kind of spit and sputtered a little bit and then finally shut off. Um, 
I looked at that. Um, the dead man switch wasn't coming up far enough to fully engage the brake and the, the kill wire. So, works beautiful now. So ship it back to the customer. So, appreciate y'all watching, stopping by, and checking out what we have here at the shop, what we got going on, and everything. And, uh, really do appreciate it. Appreciate all my subscribers. So, if you would please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down there in the bottom, and uh, we'll catch you all on the next one. And as always, keep wrenching.